Let's look at how we calculate the present value of a lump sum. We've already discussed how you compute the future value of a lump sum, and by a lump sum I mean one, one deposit, one withdraw, one amount of money. Later in the course we'll look at how we compute the present value for a series of cash flows, but right now let's just start with one. And I've already drawn a little picture here. I've drawn this time cash flow diagram. I guess I should be uh, I should be more specific here and write in time right here. So this thing goes across time. These are the different periods or the different years and we're going to get a thousand dollars in year one. So the question is what is that worth to us today? Well it depends on what the interest rate is and let's just pick an interest rate and we'll say the interest rate equals eight percent. Now when the money is is um, five years away we're going to have to bring it back five periods. Actually if you recall the tutorial that we had on future value remember the future value in time period n was equal to the present value times one plus the interest rate raised to the nth power. Well we can divide both sides by 1 plus r to the n and you can see that these cancel. So basically there's a relationship between present and future value. The present value is going to be equal to the future value in year n divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the nth power. Okay, it's just a simple formula we plug into, but if you think about it, why does this work? If we were bringing it back one period, it would be 1 plus r. Okay, if we were bringing it back two periods, it would be 1,000 divided by 1 plus r squared. And so let's, let's take a look at this. Okay, well, let's start, with, let's start with the simple case. Let's find, suppose the future value, and we'll come back to the example we have up there. Suppose the future value in year one is a thousand. And we said we're going to use, I believe, an 8% interest rate. So the present value would be equal to 1,000 divided by 1.08. So let's see what that is. 1.08. I'm going to flip that over and then multiply it by our thousand. And so we get 925.92. 925.92. Let's go back to our little picture here. Essentially, if this were a cash flow in year one and we brought it back one period, the thousand would be 925.92. But we could do the same thing here. If we brought this back one period, it would now be worth 92592. Um, what would it be worth if we brought it back a second period? Well, we could bring back the 92592, so we could have we could have the present value of the 92592 divided by 1.08 because this is the present value in year um, four for the year five cash flow. If we bring it back one more period, we're moving again. So we can divide this by 1.08. And so now we get 857.92. I'll keep going back to my little picture here. And so we bring it back another period. Ultimately, we want to bring it back one, two, three, four, five periods. So we could do it one step at a time, or we could simply use the equation we have right here. And we could just plug in. And let's see, actually, let's just check. I brought this back two periods and I, I did it twice. 
let me see if I get the same number. So suppose I took the 1,000 and I brought it back two periods. I should get this same number, 857.33 uh, or 857.34. Let's divide that by 1.08 squared. So let's bring that back two periods. Let's see what we get. So we take 1.08 and we raise it to the second power and then I'm going to flip that over and then multiply it by a thousand and what do I get? I get 857.38 so I get the same number so you can see that whether I bring it back once and then bring it back again or I bring it back all at once using this formula I get the same answer so if we want to know what the present value of that thousand received in year five is so here we have the present value equals the future value in year n divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the nth power. The future value in year n, this is year 5, is 1,000. We're going to discount by or divide by 1.08 raised to the fifth power. And we'll get 1.08 let's raise that to the fifth power you raise it to a power by hitting the y to the x key okay this is this number we actually want one over this number so I hit the one over x key to flip it over and then I'm going to multiply it by a thousand so we get six six hundred and eighty and fifty eight cents so if we brought this money all the way back to the present, so if we took this thousand and we brought it all the way back here, it would be worth 680.58. What does that mean? That means if you paid six dollars and eighty cent, six hundred eighty dollars and fifty-eight cents, and you earned eight percent in five years, you'll have a thousand dollars in your account. And present value is a very valuable tool because we'll use this all the time. We'll ask ourselves, what would you be willing to pay for $1,000 received five years from now if you want an 8% return? Well, we just answered that, 680.58. We'll use this to value things where the payments are received in the future. Okay? If you start a business, you don't get all of your money at once. Microsoft didn't make all of its money in 1984 or whenever it was founded. It made some money in 1984, it made some not money in 1985. If you're starting a business and you're able to project how much money you'll make over the next 30 years, we can take the present value of those numbers and figure out what the business is worth. And we'll do that for bonds, we'll do that for stocks, but this is an incredibly important tool in finance. And if you master this, you'll find that we can apply this to a lot of really interesting cases that um, that you'll you'll like to look at, like how to calculate the uh, repayment uh, on a mortgage, how much your car loan will be, how much you can afford to, uh, um, how expensive a car you can afford to buy, if you can afford to pay five hundred dollars a month. Okay, we'll use these same tools throughout the course.